ties of their massive army are going to win a record equaling 16th flag. Collingwood win the grand final. Collingwood are premiers in 2023. The Pies claiming their sixth. Dean's flag, Matthew Lloyd and Damien Barrett. One of the best seasons we've seen in recent memories has produced one of the great grand finals. It was a cracking game. It was, no doubt. I think, Phil, it's one of those games that with each re-watching, yeah. some of the individual performances yeah. within it will become even more iconic. And I think Pendlebury's game, and we'll touch on that soon yeah. in the last quarter, was was huge. Uh, Mitchell was massive, crisp, the goey. They didn't get the uh, the votes, but I felt they had the impact. Yeah, I love the game too, Nat. Like, it's, it's one that, uh, 1989, I fell in love with footy yeah. when your Hawks beat Geelong, and I think that's the best grand final I've seen while covering the game since I've been retired. Yeah, it was mm. iconic. There were moments everywhere, of course. Some of the the family feels, the moments we're going to remember forever. Just incredible to see these two and, of course, Peter Moore presenting that Premiership Cup as well. Then you've got the Day Cost boys mm. celebrating. It was awesome, wasn't it, Damo? Yeah, it was. And, and just the presentation of the Cup by Peter Moore to Darcy. And anyone who's got anything to do with Collingwood knows how Peter himself, Nat, went through the heartache of losing four grand finals and did everything he could in it in most of those grand finals. And then his son gets to hold up the Cup. And, Again, the Dacos story, it's already been well written. Lloydie, the man uh, in the suit there was, was a superstar Collingwood player himself. He may well have been the best Collingwood player until Pendlebury has come along. And again, we'll debate that in a few moments' time. But uh, there's just images that last forever. Yeah, I think that's why the father-son rule is one of the best yeah. things in football. Uh, and just got to keep it going. Like, what a moment. You know, it's a lot of pressure on these boys, you know, to have champion fathers like they've got and that become champions themselves and premiership stars. Uh, you know, for, for particularly Josh and uh, Nick, you know, to father Peter Dacos and uh, yeah, everyone loves Peter and it's always preferring to their father, but uh, they're, they're equally as good and special. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, isn't it? And of course, the family and the father trend <laughs> continued, yeah. didn't it, Damo? Yeah. Because Craig McRae, not only a premiership coach on that day, but uh, had a daughter, Maggie, born at 7.45am. His mm. wife didn't even wake him up when she went into labour. It was planned. And then told him not to come home that night as well, so he could uh, <laughs> do the Collingwood thing. But look, the way they have always presented themselves this year, now it became a part of the, the storylines on the day itself, the way he had dressed it on the podium after the game, and clearly pre-match. These are pre-match <laughs> scenes, and we're, we're assuming without no, anyone actually confirming this, but that may have been the moment he told his players pre-match that he had become uh, a father to Maggie on the, on the day of the grand final. He embedded into his polo, which he said after the game, 44 sons. Uh, and and that's, isn't it amazing how powerful it is, the, how engaged these players are mm. into his men. I've written down morals, ethics, principles, you know, the knowledge that he has in the game and then his ability, he's like a sports psychologist in yeah. a sense, as well as a football coach and how powerful that is and what he's done in just the space of two years. I mean, he leads yeah. with compassion and yeah, empathy. He he's really changed the mould, isn't yeah. it? We're seeing this new age yeah. coach come through and it's mm. a really wonderful thing to see. Those last two minutes of that game, Lloydie, were intense. Even as a neutral, I was on the edge of my seat. I want you to take us through yeah. and unpack the final two minutes. Yeah, I'll get you to help me here too, <laughs> Dana, because there's so much to take in yeah. here. But uh, Lockie Neal wins a free kick and drives it in. That's 10 points down. The, the Lions, it's a dangerous lead for the Pies because you're trying to hang on, but if you're too safe, they'll come at you. Look at the class here. So the Lions quick handball out yeah. to McCluggage and, and just genius from McCluggage to create something out of absolutely nothing. Spots Danaher, Danaher seizes that moment and plays on. I think it's a smart thing yeah. to do. A, it saves time, but it also takes away the pressure of kicking a set shot. And the next centre bounce is obviously massive. Who's going to get territory? Who's going to get the ball move? How good is this for oh, Barry? That's huge. Huge. He didn't have his best day, Barry, but that was a huge bit of and take us through this, because Hoskin Elliott came in here and there's a, there's a free kick here that's uh, basically taken advantage of because no one can hear the whistle. Yeah, so the umpire should have brought it back, but I'm not going to labour that. Huge spoil from Darcy Moore, the poise of Dacos. Most would have hacked that out, but he didn't. This is a mistake here from Hoskin Elliott. He yep. played on too quick and it wasn't and the full metre. Yep. So suddenly they're under pressure again. Yep. And then uh, Mitchell retrieves Mitchell it though. Retrieves and then Chris has to take on the tackler here. He brings it down but the this line. this is poor from Billy. Billy was behind and brilliant from Harris Andrus. Suddenly it's a live ball again and they are scrambling. But Pendlebury was huge. What's uh, Pendlebury get the hands on the contest here and does what he often does now in these moments. Brings it in so that the umpire has to come in and intervene. But it is game on here and it's a stoppage. And Tom Mitchell, what a day he had. 
the big moment play. He drew that free kick yep. smart. And it was Oscar, there. Yeah, Oscar as much as you'd rather it wasn't played, it was there. And this is where they play scenarios and moments better than any other team, and it's why they are the Premiers for 2023. They did it every final, Damon. They did, and then the man who takes this mark here, my check, uh, Penelby told him to go mm. down back at that last uh, yeah. stoppage, that last centre clearance, and he ends up with the ball, takes it down the line with, uh, with no time left for Brisbane, and that's how they uh, manage the clock in the most important game of the year, having done it so well for the past two seasons. Yeah. They trained those scenarios mm. for two mm. years and it finally paid off. And look at the reaction there from Craig McRae, who was so animated. I don't think we've seen him that animated on the bench uh, all season, but uh, the celebrations have continued well into the week and they will continue for a little while now. I want to talk about Scott Pendlebury, though, because 35 years of age, he was the Oof. oldest player out there on the MCG on Saturday. And that last quarter, he was immense. He had 11 touches, which was ranked number one, Lloydie, for both teams. Lee Matthews often says, once you head up to the coach's box, you feel helpless. But when you're Craig McRae and you've got this man, Scott Pendlebury, you wouldn't feel helpless because he, he's like a coach out there on the field. And Damon and I have spoken about it the last 24 hours in great detail. His coaching ability out there on that field, the amount of times he instructed his players, the traffic cop is yeah. out there on the field, mm. Damon. But, but equally importantly, Lordy, you, you can direct as much as you want and you can verbalise yeah. as much as you want, but you've got to get involved yeah. if you want true leadership mm. out there. And these are all last quarter moments, Nat, where yep. we're just seeing him, he, his presence of mind mm. and his calmness to, to not waste the disposals. And mm. again, they're chipping away here. There's four points. There's seven minutes left. Anything can happen. But when he's got the ball in his hands, you know it's going to stay in Collingwood yeah. possession. And it was a masterful last quarter. Eleven of those possessions were were contested, and then he goes and spoils it again at key moments. And that ball went to the goalie after that yeah. spoil. Now, I had the fortune yeah. uh, to speak to him, great fortune to speak to him after the game. And he, he touched on how often he would look to Craig McRae and ask what he wanted uh, when it was to sl kill the game yep. or to go after yeah. the game. And then it's his job then to let everyone know what needs to happen out there on that ground. So it's a phenomenal. And just even your insight on AFL.com.au yeah. yeah. overnight, uh, mm. Nat, with what Lordy had by way of his experiences with mm. Pendlebury this year as, as a coach at Halebury, he you were saying he can articulate messages that you felt may have taken weeks and even months mm. to get into 16 and 17 and 18 year old kids inside yeah. two or three minutes. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I think he's going to have uh, about 16, 17 clubs, maybe 18, <laughs> all saying we need your services for a long time. Wouldn't surprise me if a club says to him, yeah, you're an assistant for two or three years, but we are giving you that job, senior yeah. job. Before he even starts. Before he even starts. That, yeah. That's how good he is. Now he's an incredible yeah. leader, is Scott Pendlebury. And, of course, he was so pitiful in our Crypto.com Brave play of the day. Now, the Lions had hit the front here in this last term. He steps up. Brilliant quick hands as well by Nick Dacos for this Jordan Degoe game. You see here Scott Pendlebury. And, Damo, this was just such an impressive piece of play, wasn't it? You cannot underestimate the impact on this result of this play. Yeah, and, and for two steps to get to the to goey yeah, to have, to then drill that over the goal umpire's head from 50 metres. And the, the quickness of thought and hands of Dacos to get it out to him. And as you said, Nat, it started with the clearance by Pendlebury. Too many midfielders for Brisbane, though, didn't work defensively well there. So uh, when you're up by you know, a kick or two points or whatever they were at that point, they, have, they lost the clearance. You've got to burst down there to get in front of the goey, grab a jumper. Grab Dacos, but uh, Jared Lyons was one that was, you know, spilling out to the wing when the ball was in dispute further afield. So they made some key errors there. Billy Frampton comes into this Pies side to replace Dan McStay for the grand final. He plays a role on Harris Andrews. Did you feel like it was effective, Lloydie? Did it work? Uh, first half, I'd say yes. Uh, second half, I'd say it was a big no. Uh, to me, uh, at the end of the day, I'd say it was a loss in terms of he didn't obviously touch the footy much. That wasn't his job to be. But I think by the end, Harris Andrews is a great player mm. and you're not going to keep him down for too long. But uh, Billy became, to me, a bit of a liability in the second half uh, with, Frampton, uh, with Andrews' big <coughs> spoils marks. Uh, they get the win. He only needed to clunk one of them, though, Lord. Yeah. And, and, he, and he had opportunities, like that, that one. He, yeah. he, he, he that was his best that. opportunity. I, I believe that if Collingwood weren't generating scores from everyone else, and you had know, four from Bobby Hill, two from Chris, two from Dugowie. Mm. They would have had to structurally change that right. match up, up and say, Darcy Moore, Jeremy Howe, we need you to go forward and score. And if Murphy hadn't gone down so early, it would have been yeah, another. Yeah, and yeah. flip that. So uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think Harris Andrews uh, won that duel, yeah. Well, Billy Frampton won in the end because he is yeah. a Premiership player, of course. What a day it was for Norm Smith medalist Bobby Hill. And what a story this is to Damo because he's overcome cancer. He's moved yep. across from the Giants. Four goals, 18 touches, nine score involvements and this spectacular mark where he couldn't see anything at all. No. It's a great story. And went back and kicked the set shot after yeah. that, Nat. Also in the third quarter, Collingwood only managed to kick the, the one goal for the entire quarter. It came late and it came from a pass from Hill to Pendlebury. You can't underestimate that performance. But, I mean, this creativity. And, and these three goals in the second quarter amongst the four goals spree from the, uh, the, the the Collingwood team. And this tackle, this is what That's Jeremy brilliant. Howe identified yeah. yesterday as his favourite moment of the game. Yeah. Not the four goals, but the tackle on Starsevich. He, he must be fit too. Like, I wasn't sure what when he got to Collingwood. Can you trust Bobby Hill? Does he have the work rate to want to work? Through? But his efforts from start to finish, yeah. uh, you know, he's often laying the, in the big hits yeah. in the first final against the Giants, uh, second final against the Giants. So he had it all. He was a complete player right through the finals. Yeah. And he said too after the game that he was inspired by Cyril Rioli. Both him and Nick Dacos watched Cyril Rioli highlights before yeah. the game <laughs> to inspire them. So it was a brilliant performance from Bobby Hill. Now, Obviously, the Magpies are going to be basking in all of their Premiership glory for a long time to come, but they still have to go through Lloydie's <laughs> exit lounge. So, Lloydie, yeah. looking at the off-season, what do they need to focus on now? Well, this time last year, Nat, we are talking about Geelong. Yeah. And then they don't make the final. So it's amazing how quick it can turn. You have to keep improving yourself. And I look at their midfielders and, you know, Taylor Adams, they're, they're not getting any younger, this Collingwood side. They're 10 players 30 years or older. Yep. So Scotty Penelbury, can he keep doing this again in 2024? So, they have to, so that's why they bought Tom Mitchell in. Um, but he's one of those 30-year-olds. Yeah, he's one of those 30-year-olds. Yeah. So Nick Dacos will go full-time in there. Yep. But I, I think they struggle. Uh, at times they tried Lipinski, they tried Josh Dacos. It didn't work for them with those types of so players. So go again. So I think the recruiting potentially I could table. look at, can you get a bargain basement, another big mm. bullocking type player, just from a depth perspective. I think they need to add a key forward. Yes, McStay didn't play, but I think in time they do need the Ben King type, the type that is a, a star. I just don't think... My check's a workhorse, McStay's a workhorse, Cox is over 30 as well. So I think they need to add a key forward to that mix uh, and plan for the regeneration, which we just touched on. Ten of those, a bit like Geelong. You, know, you win a premiership and you get it right here, but you can quickly fall over the edge. So that's why you know, I won't be saying they'll be in the grand final next year because they got uh, so much out of their veterans, but then it can quickly grab you and others can go past you. The Brisbane Lions, they mm. wouldn't have lost no friends no. on Saturday at the mm. MCG. It was a gutsy performance, just falling short. What do they need to do in the off-season? Uh, I still think their midfield is brilliant. Uh, their forward line's fantastic, but uh, I know there was no pain. I'm not 100% sold on him. Okay. Uh, Gardner, yeah, I think yeah, he's, he's ageing, coming to the end, so I think I'd add another key back and look around the competition. Duday may be someone they're looking at as well. Uh, the midfield, I think Jared Lyons, you think, um, you know, would, would the game's gone past him as well. Uh, Ashcroft comes back into the team, but inject Rayner and Bailey into the midfield, which they have done anyway, but have a more permanent. Here's Cameron Rayner. Had a poor grand final. He had a poor grand final, it has yeah. to be said. Yeah. yeah. Um, they all, look, their, their game plan stood up in that grand yeah. final already, didn't he? And their system worked, but uh, it would have worked better if Rayner had been able to, to perform as he had been doing in the finals. And they did play him higher, Cameron Rayner, but didn't quite work. Uh, Zach Bailey had a fantastic first half, a little bit quiet in the second half, but he's a, he's a star and they're going to get better. So it's all there for Brisbane, uh, mm. and they can add these players through the midfield. And the MCG Hoodoo, uh, they had a fantastic grand final, but the record is still there. It's where you're going to win big games. They've lost 15 of their last 16 now at that venue. Well, thank you so much for driving this mm. exit lounge. Right. It's been brilliant. We will do it again next year. But 2023 season. That's old yeah. news now. We're going to get our crystal balls <laughs> out and going. have a very, very early look at 2024. And I want from each of you an in and an out in terms of the top eight. So who might come in and who might fall out? Mind you, trade season hasn't even started. That's the thing. So we're going early now. <laughs> I, I just feel the Crows um, missed a major opportunity this year and they, they will argue at a goal umpire cost them a spot. I will argue they didn't win enough games. Mm -hmm. that they, they had the right to win with some close losses. So I've got them in and I've still got the slows on St Kilda. I had the slows on St Kilda all year. They made the finals, finished sixth and pushed GWS mm -hmm. at, at, a, at a certain stage of that final they played. But that's the easy, easy transaction I've got at this stage. Now. It'll be a strong review. I think it already has been at the Western Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. So I've got those 
those guys coming in, the doggies, and uh, the Saints going out as well. And I was tempted to put out Port Adelaide at the expense of the Crows mm. as well, but I uh, played it safe there. <laughs> OK, well, I've got St Kilda coming out as well, so we're all aligned mm. in that regard, but I have Adelaide coming mm. in. I agree with you completely, Dame. I think they're ready for it. The wooden spoon. This one is a big one. Lloydie, who have you got? Uh, I've got the Eagles. I, I think that uh, they will probably get Harley Reid and, and add a bit to their draft, but I just don't see their middle rung of players from 21 to 26 yeah. year olds is just the cupboards bare. So I think it's going to be another struggling year for them. Yeah, I think it's going to be another North Melbourne year yeah. as well. North or West Coast, they're mm. so far behind yeah. the, the club immediately above them and the ladder, that being Hawthorne, that I think it's going to be one of those two again. North Melbourne for mine. Let's take a look now at the 2024 Grand Final and who we think <laughs> might be in the big dance, dare I say it again. Damo, yeah, well, who have you got? I've got one of the combatants from 2023 making it again in uh, Brisbane and I just love what Carlton did by, by reshaping wow. itself in season and I think if they uh, get away to a good start next year and don't fall away early like they did this year, they'll be there. The baggers. Yeah, I think Brisbane have everything uh, to go on and win a premiership uh, and maybe it's their year next year after the experience and I've, I've, I've fallen in love with the Giants and I don't see you know, any reason why they just don't go to another level next year. Well, well yeah. again, we're all aligned because Brisbane for mine and Melbourne I have in there but I want to put a caveat. I'm going to need to see what they're going to do in the in the trade period to see if their forward line is going forward, to improve. Don't they? Yeah. yeah, And exactly. also what they get for uh, Grundy going out. It won't be a lot but it'll be something. So. Yes. Now, we, as we know, the Pies uh, boys have been celebrating long and hard <laughs> across the weekend. The Dacos brothers, of course, no different to that. And look, we've got this image of them as these perfect, I guess, little mama's boys, but uh, <laughs> not so perfect when it came to some interviews and media commitments they had to do yesterday. Check this out. Um, we saw some amazing scenes of, of you and your dad and a lot spoken about your dad. But, you know, I saw you, like, grabbing your mum and... For, you, for her and your, and your sister, it must have been an amazing moment too. Um, <laughs> hey, oh, come in. Yeah, Look, come in. Are we able to quickly get this photo? <laughs> Bro, I'm yeah. Oh, OK, well, I'm just saying, that's what they want. Oh, I'm on air. Right. Oh, you now? Yeah, what do you think? I'm doing. Oh, my God, sorry. Come in with the premiership pub. Come on, yeah, in you go. There we go. All right. Um, what does it mean to, to have this with you? It's so special. I mean, as I said, a lot of hard work's gone into it. <laughs> he got so yeah, salty to it, Josh. He's like, well, come on, yeah, do this photo. It's the first decision-making error they've made all year the day before. <laughs> Do you know who he was? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. At least he had her beautifully to the chair. Oh, she did too. I don't think many of the players knew where they no. were at all <laughs> yesterday. Uh, that is it for Access All Areas. Thanks to Crypto.com for another year. I just want to shout out our producer, Lucas Shearer. He has been incredible. And, of course, the crew from Mars, Locke, Farmer, Campbell, Dave, Belly, Says Jay, Simone, Chris, Fothers and Alex as well. Thank you to all of you behind the scenes. Thank you so much for watching AAA as well. It's been a pleasure having your company. All the best in the off-season. Don't forget, trade period is just around the corner in afl.com.au and the AFL app is the only place to go for all your news. Lloydie and Damo, thank you as well. You've so both you both have been brilliant. You were awesome, Dave. Thank you so much. Enjoy the off-season.